Yo, what up guys? Mike here, coming at you from the Mushroom Farm, and I got a great video for you guys tonight. So tonight, we're going to talk about the Cordyceps militaris, alright? This is a medicinal mushroom that I've been growing here on my farm. We're going to harvest some of these Cordyceps militaris. We're going to talk about my substrate recipe and some of my growing methods I used while growing this mushroom in this video. And I want to say if you're new and you're just now tuning into this channel, my name's Mike. I'm a mushroom farmer. I've been farming gourmet mushrooms nine years full time. Here's just a few shots of some of my grows over the years. But I basically grow these mushrooms here on my farm and I sell them at farmers markets and to high end restaurants. We have over 260 videos on mushroom farming and mushroom cultivation on this channel. I'm doing daily uploads and monthly subscriber giveaways so if you're into mushrooms and farming make sure you click that subscribe button right now so you get more mushroom and farming videos like this in the future but anyway on to today's video the cordyceps militaris so let's check these out guys i got a couple trays here that i've been growing whoa don't lose them let me let's just take it out of that tray so i got several different substrate recipes that i've been messing with here this is my very first time doing large trays of cordyceps militaris and we did a fabulous job this is the Mesa Mix, by the way. If you're wondering, what is this substrate? This is Mesa Mix. I have developed it myself here on my farm. So anyway, today we're gonna harvest some of these. I'm gonna talk to you guys about the ingredients I use in these recipes. I also encourage you to go over and check out my video, Cordyceps Liquid Culture. And I actually talk about all the recipes I'm doing in my Cordyceps experiment here on my farm in that video. And I have several other videos on this channel just talking about my Cordyceps experiment that I have going on right now. And I have linked that video down in the description box below and any other videos for Cordyceps Militaris growing. Just gonna scroll back in my previous videos and check that out. But anyway, let's get on to harvesting some of these mushrooms. All right guys, so here we are. Hopefully you can hear me okay over the forehead. Got my cordyceps drink right here, boy. Made me some cordyceps tea. We're gonna be sipping on that while we're harvesting these cordyceps. But anyway, like I said, I have a couple different substrate recipes here. Now check this one out. Okay, this is the Mesa mix. Like I said, four parts brown rice, one part soybean meal, and two tablespoons malt extract. If I ever make any modifications to that, I, I will show you guys and inform you here on the channel. Here's another Mesa Mix recipe. Boom, look how thick those are. Now, what I want to say, the egg recipe. Which, which mushrooms do you guys think look thicker to me? There's the egg substrate. All right, all right. Mesa Mix. Mesa Mix. Egg substrate. Well, we're gonna find out too which one provides the most weight. I will say this egg substrate; they, these do look cool. I look how these. I like how these look. You see how they're kind of like long and stringy. They grew very straight. I like it. It's pretty cool. The Mesa mix, though, chunky boy. Looks like we're gonna get a little more weight here. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm anxious to see which ones we get the most weight out of. I did harvest a tray earlier this morning, and I got six ounces fresh off the tray that I harvested. So I was pretty happy about that. Like I said, this is the first time I've ever done tray style growing. I've done small jar style growing before. So this is like a big step up. And if you're new and you're just checking into my Cordyceps grows right now, if you're wondering why, why there is this bare spot on here, this is just because this is, I grew these in bags and that's where the filter patch was. I noticed the correlation basically just the way that I had the filter patch set up and I'm using 0.2 micron filters on all of these. Just so you guys know, these are all 0.2 micron filters. They're all the same size tray and they're all the same strain. They were inoculated within one day of each other. They were grown under in the exact same grow room under the exact same growing conditions. So it's a really good test right here. But what that bare patch is, it's basically because I had the bags really high. If you look at some of my grows that I set up earlier with my cordyceps growing, I had the bags really puffed up and the filter patch was actually providing a lot of airflow for the cordyceps and they don't need that much. I'll just say they do the best when the bag is cinched down and I did not tape over any of the filters. I got some recommendations from a few of the cordyceps growers that I should try putting a little bit of tape over the filter to cut down more airflow. So the next batch we do here on this channel, we're gonna do an awesome batch too. We're gonna do the Mesa mix, mainly that. I'm gonna tweak, do some little tweaks with the recipe and hydration just to see if we notice any differences but I'm totally going to cinch that bag down a whole lot more from the very beginning on all of these when they're starting up just so we don't have any dry patches in the front of the substrate and also just to help with that pin formation we get an even pin set all throughout the substrate. 
So check out my upcoming videos on my cordyceps growing up. Like I said, I'm gonna share everything with you guys on this channel, so subscribe if you're not already, because there's gonna be some awesome stuff coming. But anyway, we're gonna get to harvesting these, see what's gonna give us the most weight. I also, I've got some, what do I got here? I got, this is a petroleum jelly or Vaseline. We're gonna use some of that to use some of these plates here. And we're gonna put a little cordyceps fruit on some of these plates to collect our own ASCO spores so we can create some of our own cordyceps genetics here on the farm. And I wanna say all of these genetics here that I am currently growing, these are from Appalachian Gold Fungi. Okay, so I, I purchased these from Jeff Manganiello at Appalachian Gold Fungi. And this is the Beast 9 crossed with Hades, okay? So he provided me these genetics, and I'm gonna try to create some of my own genetics here and just see how we do, but I will say how Jeff makes his. These are single spore isolates, and he combines the mating pairs, so they are perfect strains, honestly, and he tests them all on his farm. Basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna collect a bunch of ASCO spores. Okay, guys, so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna collect some ASCO spores really quickly. What I've done is I flame sterilized some of my tools, so I have flame sterilized tweezers and a scalpel. I also have some petroleum jelly here. What I'm basically going to do is I'm going to take a small piece of the fruit body with a piece that is basically showing the parathesium, kind of those fuzzy things on it, those are the ASCO spores. So anyway, I'm gonna take a piece of that fruit body and I'm going to put it on the top of the Petri dish with petroleum jelly. I'm just gonna stick it up on the top lid of the Petri dish, and what that's going to do is going to allow the mushroom to release its ASCO spores. They're going to drop onto the agar, okay, and then those spores will grow out, they will mate and fuse together. I am going to take a section of that then, make my own LC, and then I will inoc inoculate my own cordyceps substrate. We will allow those mushrooms to grow up, and then I will take one of those fruity bodies and clone it, and then strategically save that master culture. Okay, I'm gonna keep that master culture in complete darkness and strategically propagate from that master and just try a couple grows here on my farm and see if I can create any commercial strains from a multi-asco spore type of growing method like I'm describing right there. And like I said, I will also do some single spore isolation in the future just so we can create some of our own cordyceps genetics here on the farm. This stuff fascinates me and I just get a kick out of it. So I don't know how soon we're gonna get into the single spore isolation. I've got a whole lot of other things I wanna accomplish here first, but if that is on my radar now, I am enjoying this. But let me just show you guys how I'm going to take one of these fruit body samples and put it on the Petri dish. So there we go. We got the petroleum jelly on the swab, sterile swab. Okay, I'm just gonna put a little dab right there on top of that Petri dish. It's pretty good. Let's set this thing aside for right now. Got my tweezers, got the scalpel. There we go, so that's what I'm doing. I got my little cordyceps right there. Look at those, got, got it full of ASCO spores. We're going to place it on the petroleum jelly. There you have it. onto the Petri dish, it goes, okay? So now that can be wrapped. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna keep that in darkness, and once I see some mycelium growing on that agar, like I said, I'm just gonna section some of that off, make some LC, and we're gonna grow some more cordyceps. But anyway, let's go ahead, let me get some of this junk out of the way, and we're gonna get into harvesting these. All right, guys, so just to let you know my harvesting technique, we're gonna, we're gonna harvest these guys here in a second. Now, I picked a tray earlier, so this tray that I picked earlier, basically I just did it all by hand, okay? We're gonna try the scissors and just see how the scissors does on this. I think it'll be really fun to kind of cut this too. It might look really sexy on camera. Let me just move this a little closer. Maybe we can get something cool on camera. Got my scissors right here though. We're gonna weigh it on a male scale. I've got a male scale here. Let's take, oh man, this is, it's kind of hard. I don't know, I don't know how well these are gonna work. Ugh, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I can't do it, guys. It just it gave me a funny chop. We're just going to pick by hand, okay? So we're going to pick all these by hand. Actually, it's going pretty quick. It's going pretty quick. I'm happy with this. I have an identical tray, by the way, that I'm going to um, tear on the scale, and then we're going to place this one on top of it. But I'm just curious what our weight is going to be. I think we're going to get a better weight. It's going pretty good. Look at that. 
I think we're gonna get a better weight on these than what I do on the um, egg substrate. It's kind of cool. Look at that. I just thought this substrate straight up, everything about it as I was seeing it growing, it just looks thicker, man. Like I said, this is the Mesa mix. One part soybean meal, four parts brown rice, two tablespoons malt extract, hydrated with 1,000 milliliters of water, and then that got distributed amongst three myco or uh, three of these trays, okay? I inoculated all of that substrate after I sterilized it with 500 milliliters of LC. Just a few I dropped, I'm sticking on there real quick. Okay, so I have my, my male scale right here. Thing's dirty. Okay, you can see we got zero ounces. Removing the tray that I had on there. You can see we just lost, what is it? It's a three and a, three and a half ounce, four ounce tray, something like that. Let's put this on there. Oh boy, oh boy, we got some fatties, boy. Oh boy. Oh, hang on. There it is. There it is. Y'all see that? Y'all see that? This is like seven and a half ounces. I almost got eight ounces of cordyceps right here. It's like seven, seven and a half ounces. Haul at you, boy. We just grew a bunch of cordyceps. Okay, so that was cool. That is the Mesa mix. Let's go ahead. Let's check out the egg substrate. So here's the egg substrate. And like I said, I thought this one looked a little more airy to begin with. All right, so let's just set that down. Okay guys, so got this ready. We're gonna start tearing some of these off. These look cool, man. These long, skinny ones, look at that. So we're gonna tear off these guys. We're gonna weigh them, see what the harvest was. Yup. Giving her a haircut, boy. And this one, it, honestly, this one, it didn't pin as well either. So the yield's probably going to be a little bit lower. It, we would have got a better pin set. Like I said, there wouldn't be that bare spot if I would have had less airflow to these. They just had a little too much airflow, and I should have had that bag cinched down a little bit. These are definitely skinnier fruit bodies, though. There's not as much, there's not as much mass to it for sure. Not as meaty. That's pretty good. It's about as good as I want to get it anyway. All right, let's check it, let's swap it. So let's see what we grew. Dang, boy. You guys see that? Okay, we got three ounces right there. So the Mesa Mix literally blew it out of the water, all right? So not too bad, that was my first time. And honestly, I'm calling a Mesa Mix just literally because I invented this specific one. I did see another grower in China. They didn't tell, they didn't say the recipe. I, I hate when people are not giving out their recipes. These gatekeepers drive me freaking nuts because what are you doing? You're just like holding all this information to yourself and then what's gonna happen? You're gonna die one day and then no one's gonna learn that information. So why not have some dude like me just telling everybody all the recipes so we can all build off these things and just all be better growers, okay? So I just wanna say the recipe specifically for my Mesa mix, and here's one I haven't harvested yet. You can just see, look how fat these freaking fruit bodies are, okay? So, this is the first time I've ever tried this recipe, completely experimental, but it worked out really well for me. But I saw a guy using soybean meal, it was a guy in China, he was using soybean meal as a supplement to his rice, okay? And they never specified exactly how much was in the video, but I figured I'd give it a shot. I actually tried one part soybean meal, three parts rice, but this one is one part soybean meal, four parts rice, okay? I think it just overall gave me a better effect. Like, I don't think you need that much soybean meal. There's a lot of protein in it, and that's what helps with the fruit body development, and I have heard, actually, it does help with cordyceprin production, okay? Now, I put malt extract in here, too, okay? And I put two tablespoons, essentially, of malt extract into my bulk substrate batches that I was making. And let me just be very specific about my bulk substrate batch in case anybody wants to try some of these. And I encourage all you guys to try these recipes yourself and just see what kind of results you can get. But basically I use, this is a volumetric recipe, 400 milliliters soybean meal, 1600 milliliters rice, okay? So 2000 milliliters dry material, okay? Volumetric, no grams, you do not weigh this. I don't, I don't wanna hear someone asking what a weight is. 
because I don't weigh it. I go all by volume, so this is a volumetric recipe. You have 1,600 milliliters, like I said, brown rice, 400 milliliters soybean meal, and then I use two tablespoons of malt extract. I put all of this in a myco bag, and then I hydrated it with 1,000 milliliters of water. I also did have a few batches. I hydrated with 1,250 milliliters of water, 1,250. So I encourage all you guys to even, if you want to tweak your hydrations a little bit, just based on your situation, those are kind of two basic ones you can go with. Kind of go in that zone. I might add just a tad more water too, even just to see if I get any different effects. But like very, very happy with what we just got right here. Also, so that recipe, I made that in a micro bag. It was essentially like a five to six pound bag of substrate is what I ended up with. I pressure cooked those then two and a half hours at 15 PSI. I allowed them to cool here in front of the flow hood. And then I took 500 milliliters of liquid culture and I dumped that into my bulk substrate bag. I shook it up and then I took my trays, okay? I wiped out my trays really good with alcohol, okay? It's all I did is wipe them out with alcohol. Then I took my bulk substrate and I dumped that, that bag, that five to six pound bag of bulk substrate amongst three trays, okay? And then I also had the 0.2 micron bags. I don't have any laying around right now, but the ones I had on the outside sealing them, okay, I had 0.2 micron bags, XLS, it's a, what is it, XLST? Yeah, XLST bags that I had sterilized. Okay, so I pre-sterilized my bags in the pressure cooker. So the bags were stale, st sterile. I used those to go over the trays then. And then I actually sealed mine. The best way I think actually is just to cinch the bag down tightly with like some folder clips or some binder clips. That way you can just get that, you can get the airflow right on it better, I feel like that way. If you seal it, I kind of feel like the bag puffs up too much. So my next batch, I'm just gonna use all binder clips. And like I said, I'm gonna tighten that filter patch down a lot. I'm not gonna allow much airflow at all to get into there, that substrate. And I might even put a little piece of tape over it um, to even cut down on the airflow even more. But basically, yeah, that's what I did. I dumped that five to six pound bag of the substrate recipe that I inoculated with the 500 milliliters of LC. I dumped it amongst the three trays. I had a flame sterilized ladle that I kind of like smashed down the substrate. And I just kind of, I kind of lightly pressed it down into the trays just so it would form into the trays. And then I put the bags over them and then I incubated them. But anyway, I'm going to do a step-by-step -step tutorial about how I actually put that substrate together, make the trays and everything like this on the channel. I just wanted to show you guys the harvest because this was cool, okay? Because like I harvested that one tray last night, got like like seven ounces, like I said, six, seven ounces. I can't even remember now, six, seven ounces. This was the, this was the big one today, the 7.5, seven ounces. So um, anyway, I harvested the one last night, figured I would do these with you guys today on the channel and uh, just share it with you guys. But anyway, hopefully you found this video helpful and informative. If you did, please drop this video a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And also, if you have any questions or any suggested videos, be sure to drop that down below in the comment section and I will answer all your questions and I might even make you a video. But that's all I got for you on this one and I will catch you guys on the next one.